purpose of why we've put this together was to demonstrate the synergies between top achievers. And mm -hmm. I truly believe that you are one of the exceptional top achievers, not only because you are one of my clients. Um, but it was when I moved to Canberra that I started thinking about, um, you know, like what, what would my career look like long term and the longevity of being a physiotherapist. And while it was something I really enjoyed, particularly going into the private practice area um, where you're seeing 30 patients a day, um, it's physically exhausting. I always had this dream of owning a business that sold shoes for ladies with really big feet because I've got size 13 feet and um, you know as a 12 year old with size 13 feet you could never get shoes so I had to go to the men's department um, I had to go and get shoes you know custom made and all this sort of stuff so you know there's a, there was a big gap in the market that I'd identified from as a, as a young girl and uh, this idea sort of came back to me when I was in Canberra Anyway, so I started looking at this idea of setting up a shoe business. And so I spent all my spare time in Canberra because, you know, I just moved there, didn't have a lot of, you know, friends or networks. Um, and Jules actually, even though he was working, was finishing off his PhD. So every spare second he had, he was studying. And so I used that time to start doing some research and having a look at this idea of having a business that, you know, sold these shoes. But you know what? <laughs> I think you, the beauty about it is, and we talked, we've talked about this a lot, you, you learned some really valuable lessons through that time and you also uh, manufactured some really clever pivots that you know, based on timing could have played out very differently yeah. today. I mean, yeah. today you wouldn't need to spend $30,000 on, on a basic e-commerce. You could pop it up on Shopify yeah, absolutely. and spend two to three grand. I started looking at some study options. Um, when I had the shoe business, I was in a um, through business essay, through sort of had a mentoring program that I was involved in. So I, I contacted uh, my mentor and uh, caught up with him and had a chat about, you know, MBA seemed like the obvious thing to do. And I don't think I really understood the nuances of, you know, an MBA versus something like what I ended up doing, which was a Masters of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Um, and it was him that sort of pointed me in that direction. He said, Lauren, I know you very well. Um, you, you'd do an MBA and that'd be great, um, but it's not gonna serve you in the way that you probably think it would. You'd have to end up going working for someone else. One of the biggest things that you've experienced is because the LIFT method, mm. the model of care, is so unique. Mm. You've encountered some significant challenges yep. on the journey, yep. um, which for most people would have been failure experiences and they would have given up. Mm. Unlike most businesses who have one challenge, you've had many at Lyft, mm. from even getting an oncologist at the beginning mm. to look at this, the model yeah. of care. And that is true entrepreneurship at its core mm. because you've had to not only in the medical profession it's not about persuasion mm. because there are a whole bunch of rules you can't just go and make shit up and no. then go hey follow me yeah I, that's what i want yeah you know, and what did you do when you, know, you got hit by some really early mm. challenges that mm. should have shut you down mm. each person that sat in the hot seat has this incredible belief mm. that they can make it happen mm. And in your case, it wasn't just a blind belief. You knew that if you put in all the action steps, you could overcome them. And a lot of people didn't think you could do it, right? And you did it. And now the world is benefiting, right? From this unique model of care that is improving lives. What are your top three lessons that you would impart about life or business yep. to another driven and smart business person? I would tell them to keep investing in themselves, mm -hmm. probably number one, um, and that could be formal education or you know having a mentor or whatever. But never stop learning. Mm -hmm. Get the right team around you. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, for me, that works in two ways. There's obviously the team on the ground, uh, who, like you said, you know, reception team and all of that, clinicians. Um, but then also the team that people don't see. You know, getting the right accountant, getting the right advisor. Um, you know, getting the right lawyer, getting all of those other um, support people um, who are aligned and who understand your business. And, and who believe in you. And who believe in you and who know you. I mean, the whole thing of, and I suppose that kind of, you know, this whole work-life balance thing I don't necessarily believe in. I think it's more around just finding for you what the right harmony is. Because for me, there is no such thing as balance between work and life. I'm always at work. Doesn't matter where I am. Doesn't matter if I'm with my kids down the park. I'm always just the little part of my brain is always thinking about something. 
and um, so it's not it's not you know this lane or this lane um, and I think particularly as women we get told you know there's a lot of narrative around work-life balance and you know can you have it all or you know yes but not at the same time and all this sort of rubbish well I don't subscribe to that um, and I think that if, if I was talking to a female who you know wanted to be you know getting married and having children and doing the you know that sort of traditional thing, um, I'd say absolutely you can do that. Okay. What do you do to realign? I found is a really, really great strategy is getting it out, it's writing it down. Um, you know, there's the emotional side of my mind, there's the rational side of my mind, and that feeling of being overwhelmed is when those two things are all just, you know, playing with each other. And I think, um, you know, having to actually articulate what I'm feeling overwhelmed about or what, you know, like a to-do list or frustrations, whatever it is, actually just having to articulate that takes that um, emotional, you know, feeling away from whatever it is that's going on and allows to me to, you know, to sort of see in black and white on a piece of paper. Yeah. One of the biggest reasons, and I think it's a really good lesson here to learn, you are an outstanding physiotherapist in oncology, right? You're one of the only people in Australia that's actually certified and registered in that space. So it's very easy for your team to draw you back into that clinical role mm -hmm. as the CEO. Mm -hmm. And so, and because you are very demanding on the output of the team in terms of the standards, mm -hmm. because obviously we've got to make sure we deliver the correct dosage of, of exercise as a medicine, you can be drawn really easily back into the EMC. Yep. So that's the exercise medicine clinic. I could have stopped using acronyms. And so that's a really big challenge for you. And I know that this is a challenge that other business owners face all the time. I have other clients and constantly we have to draw them back. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you think having the support team to help you understand that is a benefit for you? Yeah, I think it is. Um, the problem as well is that I really love doing that. I love I love getting my hands dirty, and I also I think that as you know, um, the CEO and and one of the business owners, I think it's um, really valuable to see what's going on at the grassroots level by you know doing doing some work. Um, so I'm a little bit mixed about it, but absolutely I need. Um, it, it's about boundaries, you know, and it's about just having those boundaries in place so that. Um, if I am wearing that clinician hat, then I'm wearing that clinician hat and that's okay. But at the, but the rest of the time, which is the majority of the time, I'm not. Um, and there is, you know, we have built a team and, you know, lead, team leaders and so forth who, you know, are, who perform that role. Yes, I could do it, but um, that's not what I spend my time doing and I, you know, have, you know, touch points still with, you know, um, all of those key people. But, uh, yeah, it's tricky, but it's just about discipline again and, and boundaries and structure. Great, and, and I think the key message there is 